we're currently working on some longer projects, but we just wanted to make a quick video with some comments about James Altman's recent video, which has gotten a lot of publicity. In his video, James Altman rightly denounces Francis, that is Jorge Bergoglio, and he says that he's not the Pope. So dear family, let the scales fall from your eyes. Neither the Dalai Lama, nor Martin Luther, nor an Imam, nor a rabbi can be a Pope because none of them are Catholic. Neither can Bergoglio because Bergoglio is not Catholic. We of course fully agree with him on that and we've pointed that out from the start of Bergoglio's anti-papacy. We think that Altman makes good points about Bergoglio. Bergoglio is obviously not Catholic, he's a notorious heretic. Anyone of goodwill should see that very quickly and the church teaches that a non-Catholic like him cannot be the Pope. We also like the fact that Altman denounces Bergoglio and various fake bishops under him as evil men. Can Jorge Bergoglio be a Pope? No, because he is not Catholic. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He is a fraud, an imposter, as are every single one of the brood of vipers. His cronies, such as Blaise Supich, Robert McElroy, Nighty Night Baby Tobin, and James Martin, all of whom support him. But don't hold your breath waiting for any of the 99 vipers Bergoglio has named as a cardinal, like the newest Heal Me With Your Mouth Fernandez. Admit, confess, Jorge Bergoglio is not the Pope because Jorge Bergoglio is not Catholic. He is a fraud. He is an imposter. He is a viper from hell. Yes, they are evil and faithless enemies of the true Catholic Church who accept false ecumenism and they don't exclude notorious heretics, among many other things. They sadly lead people astray and do hell by purporting to represent the church when they don't. They don't represent the Catholic Church, but rather the prophesied end times counter church, as our material explains in detail. People who cannot recognize that in the face of the evidence simply lack the light of faith. Also, you cannot love the Lord Jesus Christ unless you hate evil and denounce wicked men. As Psalm 9710 says, let those who love the Lord hate evil. To have true charity, it's necessary to have the faith pure and undefiled, and that's connected to hating what is evil. We also like how Altman made the point that many do not speak the truth about Bergoglio and related matters out of cowardice, fear, or groupthink. Let us ponder the old fable, the emperor's new clothes, where everyone, including the emperor, was guilty out of ignorance, cowardice, and or fear of not speaking the truth and allowed themselves in preposterous groupthink to pretend that the emperor actually was wearing clothes until, until finally the stupidity of their actions and the cowardice of their actions were exposed by the words of one child who finally spoke up and spoke the truth. Why, he's not wearing any clothes at all. Today, this day, we have an update on that old teaching fable, and it is called Bergoglio's New Clothes, and how the voice of truth exposes the truth that Jorge Bergoglio is not a pope. We've made a similar point many times. This point is applicable not only to denouncing Bergoglio, but to many issues of faith. So many people seek to please men rather than God. In John 5, Jesus tells us that this is why so many are not graced with the true faith. They seek approval or glory from other men rather than from God. If people were simply seeking to please God and tell the full truth, rather than worrying about how people will react or what other people think, things would be very different. We also like how Altman mentions that Satan does not come in a very obvious way. Satan comes by way of a deception. Let us use the brains God gave us and realize Satan is not going to come barging through the front doors ablaze in fire, openly scorching everything in sight. No, that's not the way he works. Satan is going to infiltrate and insinuate himself into the hierarchy, just like Jesus, Peter, and Paul said who will use Satan's insidious and seductive language, just like he did in the garden. Oh, surely you will not die. Yes, we've made the same point, but what Altman and so many people like him don't realize 
is that the deception did not start with Bergoglio. The deception is found in the entire Vatican II sect. It's found in the heretical documents of Vatican II and in the teaching of all of its apostate antipopes, John XXIII through Francis. The Vatican II sect is a counterchurch that has taken possession of the church's physical structures in accord with prophecy. For example, one of the heresies of Bergoglio that Altman brings up is the Abu Dhabi Declaration, in which Francis heretically professed that God wills the plurality of religions. From the moment Bergoglio signed the Abu Dhabi Agreement, destroying the fundamental and irreconcilable distinction between the Catholic Church and everyone else, and then dared to say that God willed a plurality of religions. But Altman doesn't realize that John Paul II officially taught the same heresy long before that in his first encyclical, Redemptor Hominus No. 6. John Paul II taught that the firm belief of the followers of non-Christian and pagan religions proceeds from the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, which is to teach that God wills belief in non-Christian and false religions. See our video, John Paul II's Blasphemy Against the Holy Spirit, which analyzes the Latin text of his encyclical. John Paul II also manifested the same heresy by many of his actions, such as the Assisi events. So if you denounce the error and heresy of Bergoglio, while you consider John Paul II, who taught the same thing or even worse things in many ways, to be a saint and a Catholic, you are deceived and you are being inconsistent. The foundation of all of this apostasy that we're seeing now is Vatican II and the teaching of the other Vatican II antipopes. Indeed, another heresy that Altman brings up with regard to Bergoglio is his position that adulterers, fornicators, people who commit same-sex sins, etc., may receive communion. But this is just the outgrowth of what's taught in Vatican II, namely that non-Catholics under certain circumstances may receive communion. If people who reject the papacy or another dogma may approach communion, as Vatican II heretically teaches, contrary to the teaching of the Catholic Church, then logically you could extend that principle to people who don't observe the moral law, and that's what has happened in the Vatican II counterchurch. Bergoglio in so many ways is just a more obvious manifestation of the heresies that were already taught in Vatican II and by the other Vatican II antipopes. We document that in our material. In his video, Altman not only seems to acknowledge the other manifestly heretical Vatican II antipopes to be true popes, but he seems to consider John Paul II, Paul VI, and John XXIII to be saints. Even though the last 10 Catholic popes, including three canonized saints... That's completely wrong. Those individuals were total heretics who promoted false ecumenism and religious indifferentism, among many other things. To give just one other example, Benedict XVI and John Paul II approved the Vatican Lutheran Agreement on Justification, which teaches that the canons of the Council of Trent no longer apply to the Lutheran heresies. It also teaches justification by faith alone and the annex to the official common statement. So just like Bergoglio, they were not Catholic and not valid popes. By the way, in his video, Altman makes reference to the Ten Commandments that were carved in stone by the finger of God. From the moment Bergoglio said the Ten Commandments were not rigid, even though they were carved by the finger of Almighty God himself in stone. Well, Antipope Benedict XVI doubted whether there were any stone tablets carved with the finger of God. He did so in his book, God in the World. That was just one of Benedict XVI's many heresies against scripture. Benedict XVI taught an astounding array of heresies. See our videos and articles on him, which are based on research of 30 of his books and all of his speeches. In fact, in various ways, Antipope Benedict XVI and John Paul II were worse than Bergoglio. Although we like many of the points that Altman makes with regard to Bergoglio, he fails to recognize that the problem is much deeper. The truth is that the Vatican II sect is a counterchurch and that all of its leaders, John XXIII through Francis, were manifest heretics and non-Catholic antipopes. We prove that in our material. The current situation in Rome was prophesied. In regard to how it was prophesied, see our videos Apocalypse Now in the Vatican and the Temple of God and the Antichrist located, among others. Vatican II was a notoriously heretical robber council whose documents are, frankly, heretical trash. Unless you recognize that Vatican II was heretical and modernist, and that antipopes Paul VI, John Paul II, and Benedict XVI were religious indifferentists who promoted apostasy, you really don't understand what's happening. Altman also calls Mother Teresa a saint. Remember, Bill and Hillary Clinton refused to stand and applaud Mother Teresa, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. That's totally wrong. In our video, Why Mother Teresa Was Not a Saint, we prove that Mother Teresa was sadly a horrible apostate who promoted complete religious indifferentism. She said that she loved all religions, she facilitated the worship of idols and false gods, 
She fully endorsed participation in non-Catholic and even pagan worship. All of that is condemned as mortally sinful by Catholic teaching. She was an unbeliever like Bergoglio, not a saint. It's also inconsistent for Altman to call her a saint when he doesn't recognize Bergoglio as Pope, because Bergoglio is the one who, quote, canonized her. So while Altman is correct about Bergoglio, he fails to recognize the heart of the problem. And to obstinately remain in that position is to deceive people and be deceived. Many of these people are just culpably ignorant of how bad the other Vatican II antipopes were. That's why people should really be listening to what we are saying. You will hear the full truth. Altman's other conclusions about the Vatican II sect and the other Vatican II antipopes are not correct. It's not good enough to just reject Bergoglio. We hope that he comes around on all the issues. In this video, we did not call him Father Altman because we don't know that he was ordained in the traditional rite of ordination. It seems that he was ordained in the new rite of Paul VI, which is not valid. See our videos on that matter. If Altman wants to have a discussion about the other Vatican II antipopes or the documents of Vatican II, I'm willing to do that. What we are dealing with in this post-Vatican II apostasy is a biblical judgment that corresponds to what happened to the Holy City and the people of God in the Old Testament at the time of the Babylonian captivity. In the Old Testament at that time, as a punishment for sins, the people were taken into captivity, the holy city was left desolate, and the throne of David, the Old Testament counterpart to the chair of St. Peter, was left vacant for an extended period of time prior to Christ's first coming. A similar thing has happened in the end times now after Vatican II. See our video, Did the Bible Predict 70 Years Without a Pope? The Catholic faith is definitely the one true faith, and it's necessary for salvation. But to be a true Catholic and be saved, it's necessary to be a traditional Catholic, as our material explains.